believe it or not, this code you, you are seeing right here is actually a React Native code. We're so used to the primitives of React Native, like the view, text, but things are changing and they're changing in a good way. Welcome to another video, guys. I'm just going to do a simple video where I'm going to do a simple rundown of the new API released by Facebook or Meta, uh, which is the React Strict DOM. Basically, it just allows you to create cross-platform apps, iOS, Android, and, iOS, and web, this time with less code and with less hassle. So basically, historically, when you are writing a React Native code, you generally, for a div, you'll use a view. And that led to a lot of problems, uh, especially when it comes to creating cross-platform apps for web, meaning that you're gonna share your code between iOS, Android, and web. There was a solution which came up, which was created by Nicholas, which is the React Native Web. This was done a few years ago, and it's actually still going well right now. The app big companies are actually using uh, React Native for web. I've also created a, a tutorial as well, a recent tutorial on creating an Airbnb clone with React Native Web. I'll link that in the description or here somewhere. But basically what it did, what, what the, React Native Web uh, allowed us to do was to uh, simply use the same primitives, like the view, but then it translates them uh, into React DOM uh, by simply just like painstaking, painstakingly using the text, translating back to, to a div in the React Native DOM, in the Re for React Native DOM. Um, there is like a really nice diagram which represents this. This is coming from, this is actually like a really nice diagram which illustrates this. This is coming from a blog from Simone. And you can see here that you have your normal uh, element APIs, which is your views. And then on this side here, we have your React Native uh, web. Uh, I can call it a universe, but basically that's why it, your, your DOM and your React DOM contains. And you can see a lot of translations happening uh, between the two. But then what uh, React Strict DOM is trying to do is that we sort of like turning this in the opposite direction by allowing you to have like a, a core native API, which then will be translated to the individual or the respective uh, APIs for each uh, platform. Uh, in this case, you have your element APIs in the center here. And then these are translated in the React Native side. You have your view, text, and image, which go to become a, a UI view uh, for Android, uh, for iOS, and so forth. But then on the other side, you have your, your React DOM, which is your divs main, span, and, and et cetera. These are more of like your website. So, so you'll see that you have like your native site and then you have your, your web section. And then at the center, you have that uh, DOM API allowing you to use those uh, elements, the props uh, and the different styling. So it's, it was, because it's coming from Facebook or Meta, we already know that it's been battle tested. It's been used in the wild uh, with millions of users out there, uh, millions of Facebook users. So when, one other thing that I can show you uh, in this, small demo. I'll also put a link to this code as well in the description. Uh, big ups to Nadia for the code uh, and some of the samples code that he provided. So one thing you'll, you'll notice that here is that there's this CSS.create. So a lot of influence when it comes to a React Strict DOM is coming from Stylex, which is also another new styling solution 
uh, created by Meta. They released it a couple of months ago as well. It's also a, a huge improvement in the React space. So we see a lot of styling influences from that. It's supposed to be more performant and it uses the CSS modules, which is uh, really cool. So, so here we have the HTML.div, which is like your main view, and then your HTML.h1, which is the text in this case, and then you can it translate to, uh, to the different platforms uh, accordingly. And then you have the button, which is which, which is the normal button. And then here we're showing in a modal. But one thing you must know is that like not all APIs are supported at the moment. So you might run into a problem of like maybe trying out this library or this new uh, package on a on a project and some there's still some compatibility some compatibility problems uh, because as things are being moved over. So you might find that like maybe the core APIs are covered, but then like when it comes to other APIs, they might not be uh, translated as yet, but everything is moving quickly. So this is really exciting. I just wanted to create a quick video whereby I can show you this and uh, I'm looking forward to this and I hope hopefully yourself as well. So it's just like a illustration of how it translates the like the the, the elements, the DOM elements, uh, to the native side. In this case, which is iOS, you know that you have that HTML dot div, which will be convert that will be converted into a UI view for iOS. Uh, so it's pretty cool to see that. So this will allow teams to actually create much richer experience for web while still providing support for iOS and Android allows for smaller teams and also as well allow for sharing of libraries uh, or packages across the different platforms when it comes to web uh, React uh, libraries in React Native and so forth, which is something which has something which hasn't been really possible at the moment. So, so shout out to the Meta team. Shout out to Nicholas as well, who's, who's doing a lot of the work in the background uh, together with the team at Meta. So, I'm looking forward to this project, and I'll see you on the next one.